Okay, can you give a summary for the code? The updated code for the EEG signal analysis web application introduces several improvements to enhance user experience and functionality. The backend, managed by Flask and app.py, now includes a global variable to store the current EEG data, ensuring that the analysis is performed on the same data set until new data is generated. The function Generate Synthetic EEG simulates a realistic EE signal by combining a sine wave, random noise, and periodic EMG artifacts. The fuzzy logic system, defined using the scikit fuzzy library, involves three antecedents, amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk each with their own trapezoidal membership functions covering low, medium, and high ranges. The consequent signal quality is similarly defined with membership functions for poor, average, and good quality. The fuzzy rules have been expanded to cover a broader range of input combinations, ensuring that at least one rule is activated by the input values. The analyzed data endpoint computes the amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk from the current EEG data, ensures these values are within expected ranges, and then performs the fuzzy logic analysis to determine the signal quality. Debugging output helps verify that the input values are correctly calculated. On the front end, managed by main.js, there are now two distinct buttons, generate signal and analyze signal. The Generate Signal button fetches new EEG data from the server and plots it on a dynamic chart using Chart.js. The Analyze Signal button sends a request to analyze the currently stored EEG data without generating new data, ensuring consistency in the results. The analysis results, including the signal quality, amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk values, are displayed on the web page. The HTML template, index.html, is designed to present the EEG signal control buttons, and analysis results in a clear and user-friendly manner. The overall layout ensures that users can easily generate new EEG signals, analyze them, and view all relevant information in one place. These updates provide a more robust and interactive application for generating and analyzing synthetic EEG data using fuzzy logic. Yes, yeah, so we're having a couple of problems. Okay, the code is great. Thank you very much. However, we would like to improve it further. Uh, first of all, when loading the page, can we make sure that uh, data is being loaded uh, without the need to press the generate signal data? Also, currently we're getting the following error when pressing the generate signal button the second time can we make sure we address that also can we make sure that uh, when loading the page the EEG signal is being showed, shown so the generate signal button is being automatically pressed for us and also the analyze signal button is pressed so we actually see the result also it seems that sometimes we still getting the crisp output cannot be calculated error so this is likely because the system is too sparse can we address this as well so we have to check and make sure that the input values um, whichever they are always activate at least one connected term in the antecedent via the current set of rules uh, could you also explain why does this happen and what the, the different terminology means we have the explanation for it Okay, so we auto generating the EG data on page load, fixing the chart.js canvas reuse error. That should be straightforward. We automatically analyze the signal after it's generated and display the results. So that's all should happen when loading the page. And to ensure that the input values always activate at least one connected term. This error caused because the input values provided do not activate any rules in the fuzzy logic system. We have the 
Yeah, so essentially these values, which we actually want to display. So we'll be getting uh, into it uh, quite in depth shortly. Yeah, we're having an error among the functions. Might use uh, Copilot for it. Yeah, so we're still getting errors, but it is working. Okay, we're still getting the risp output. A cannot be calculated error. We need more details. Let's actually go back uh, using HGPT. Yeah, we had that in the original code. A couple of things. First of all, we're getting this error. That should be a simple fix. If you could just fix the necessary code uh, without regenerating the whole thing, that will be good. You know, just go one by one. Just do one thing at a time. Stating the MNJS is just the function, or oh, currently we have 70, 71 lines of code. Let's remain the same. Okay, now we're getting into the same error. The uh, vortex might need more details, isn't it? Oops. It's still getting the same error. Can you fix this for us? Probably the order of things or something. We still have 71 lines of code. Right. Well, now it's working better. So every time it will give you a slightly different signal, which is great. We'll analyze the signal. So we don't actually need the analyze signal button, do we? Give us a signal quality metric. So look at the amplitude. Right. And we're still getting this undefined stuff. Yes, yeah, so we still seem to be getting the crisp output cannot be calculated error. We would like to dive deep into it. So, well, eventually we want to fix it, but we really want to understand why is this happening. If you could just provide text, full sentences, whole paragraphs, explanation, that would be great. Well, it's definitely better from what we had before. It's updating the code again. It's adding uh, more rules. No, there are 12 rules already. What? Okay, we have to go over these rules. Understanding the crisp output cannot be calculated error in fuzzy logic. The error, crisp output cannot be calculated likely because the system is too sparse, occurs when the fuzzy logic system fails to produce a definitive result. This issue is typically rooted in the configuration of the fuzzy rules and membership functions within the fuzzy inference system. To understand why this happens, let's delve into the key components and mechanics of fuzzy logic systems. Fuzzy logic system components. One antecedents, input variables. These are the input conditions or variables Understanding the crisp output cannot be calculated error in fuzzy logic. The error crisp output cannot be calculated likely because the system is too sparse occurs when the fuzzy logic system fails to produce a definitive result. This issue is typically rooted in the configuration of the fuzzy rules and membership functions within the fuzzy inference system. To understand why this happens, let's delve into the key components and mechanics of fuzzy logic systems. Fuzzy logic system components. One antecedents, input variables. These are the input conditions or variables, such as amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk in our case. Each antecedent has membership functions that define how different ranges of input values map to linguistic terms like low, medium, and high. Two, consequence, output variables. These are the outputs of the fuzzy logic system. In our case, the consequent is the signal quality with linguistic terms like poor, average, and good. Three, membership functions. These functions define the degree to which a particular input belongs to a fuzzy set. For instance, an amplitude value might partially belong to both medium and high sets, each with a certain degree of membership. Four, fuzzy rules. 
These are the if-then statements that define the relationships between antecedents and consequence. A rule might look like, if amplitude is high and frequency is fast, then signal quality is poor. How the error occurs. The crisp output cannot be calculated error occurs when the input values do not activate any rules in the fuzzy logic system. This means that the input values fail to meet the conditions specified in any of the fuzzy rules, leading to a situation where the system cannot determine a definitive output. Several factors can contribute to this issue. One, sparse rule set. If the fuzzy rules do not cover the entire range of possible input values, there will be gaps where no rules apply. For example, if there are no rules to handle a combination of medium amplitude, moderate frequency, and moderate artifact risk, inputs in this range will not activate any rules. Two, narrow membership functions. If the membership functions are too narrowly defined, many input values may fall outside the defined ranges, resulting in zero membership degrees for those inputs. For instance, if the high membership function for amplitude only covers values from 7 to 8, an input amplitude of 8.5 might not belong to any set. 3. Non-overlapping membership functions. Ideally, membership functions should overlap to some extent, ensuring that every input value has at least partial membership in one or more sets. Non-overlapping functions can leave gaps where inputs are not covered by any set. Steps to address the issue. To resolve the error, we need to ensure that the input values activate at least one rule. This involves reviewing and adjusting the membership functions and rules. One, expand membership functions. Ensure that the membership functions cover the entire range of possible input values and have sufficient overlap. This will allow every input value to have at least some degree of membership in one or more sets. Two, add more rules. Increase the number of fuzzy rules to cover all possible combinations of input values. This ensures that every combination of amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk activates at least one rule. Three, review and adjust existing rules. Ensure that the existing rules are comprehensive and cover all plausible scenarios. Implementation adjustments. To address the error, we can expand the membership functions to ensure they cover the full range of possible input values with sufficient overlap. Additionally, we can add more fuzzy rules to cover a broader range of input combinations, ensuring that every set of input values activates at least one rule. This approach should mitigate the crisp output cannot be calculated error by ensuring comprehensive coverage of input scenarios in the fuzzy logic system. In text alone, uh, can you explain how can we visually review the existing rules? We would uh, generally like to visualize as much as possible in the front panel. Visualizing fuzzy logic rules and membership functions. Visualizing the existing fuzzy logic rules and membership functions can greatly aid in understanding how the system processes input values and why certain errors, like crisp output cannot be calculated, occur. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to visualize these components on the front panel of your web application. Steps to visualize membership functions. One, create graphs for membership functions. Display plots of the membership functions for each input variable, amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk, as well as for the output variable, signal quality. These graphs can show how input values are mapped to fuzzy sets like low, medium, and high. Two, display fuzzy rules. Present a visual representation of the fuzzy rules. This can be done using tables or interactive charts that show which rules are activated based on the current input values. Visualizing membership functions. One, generate data for membership functions. For each input variable, generate data points that span the entire range of possible values. Two, plot membership functions. Use a plotting library like Chart.js to create graphs that display the membership functions for each input variable and the output variable. Visualizing fuzzy rules. One, rule activation table. Create a table that lists all the fuzzy rules and highlights which rules are activated based on the current input values. Two, interactive rule viewer. Develop an interactive viewer that allows users to see which rules are active by adjusting input values dynamically. Example implementation steps. Backend, Flask. One, generate membership function data. Create endpoints that generate data points for the membership functions of each variable. Two, calculate rule activation. 
create an endpoint that returns which rules are activated based on the current input values. Front end, JavaScript and HTML. One, plot membership functions. Use chart.js to plot the membership functions on the web page. Two, display rule activation. Create an interactive table or chart that shows the current state of rule activation. Detailed steps. Backend flask. One, generate membership function data. Create functions that generate data points for the membership functions. Create flask endpoints to serve this data. Two, calculate rule activation. Create a function that checks which rules are activated based on given input values. Create a flask endpoint to return this information. Front end, JavaScript and HTML. One, plot membership functions. Fetch the membership function data from the flask endpoints. Use chart.js to plot these functions on the web page. Two, display rule activation. Create an interactive table or chart that updates based on the current input values. Fetch the rule activation data from the flask endpoint and update the display accordingly. Summary of implementation. One, generate membership function data. Backend functions to generate data points. Flask endpoints to serve this data. Two, calculate rule activation. Backend functions to determine active rules. Flask endpoints to return rule activation data. Three, front-end visualization. Use chart.js to plot membership functions. Create an interactive table chart for rule activation. This approach will allow you to visually review the existing fuzzy logic rules and membership functions directly on the front panel of your web application, making it easier to understand and debug the system. To effectively visualize the fuzzy logic rules and membership functions on the front panel of the web application, we need to enhance both the backend and frontend components of the application. This will involve generating membership function data, calculating rule activation, and displaying these visualizations dynamically. Backend enhancements, Flask. First, we need to create functions in the backend that generate data points for the membership functions of each input variable amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk, as well as the output variable, signal quality. These functions will output the degree of membership for a range of input values, which will then be plotted on the front end. Additionally, we need a function that calculates which fuzzy rules are activated based on the current input values. This function will help identify which rules are contributing to the final output and highlight any gaps in the rule set that might lead to errors. To achieve this, we can create new Flask endpoints. One endpoint will serve the membership function data, and another will provide the current rule activation status. These endpoints will generate JSON data that the front-end can easily consume and visualize. Front-end enhancements, JavaScript and HTML. On the front-end, we need to integrate Chart.js to plot the membership functions for each variable. This involves fetching the membership function data from the back end and using Chart.js to create line charts that display how input values are mapped to fuzzy sets like low, medium, and high. These visualizations will help users understand how the input values are processed by the fuzzy logic system. Additionally, we need to create an interactive rule activation table or chart. This table will dynamically update to show which fuzzy rules are activated based on the current input values. By visualizing the active rules, users can see how different combinations of input values influence the final output and identify any scenarios where no rules are activated, leading to the crisp output cannot be calculated error. Implementation steps. One, generate membership function data. Implement backend functions to generate data points for membership functions. Create Flask endpoints to serve this data in JSON format. Two, calculate rule activation. Develop a backend function to determine which rules are activated given a set of input values. Create a Flask endpoint to return the rule activation status. Three, plot membership functions. On the front end, fetch the membership function data from the back end. Use chart.js to plot the membership functions for each variable, displaying the degree of membership for a range of input values. Four, display rule activation. Develop an interactive table or chart on the front end that updates based on the current input values. Fetch the rule activation data from the back end and highlight the, act the active rules in the table or chart. Example implementation outline. Backend, Flask. One, membership function data endpoint. Create a function to generate data points for the membership functions. Serve this data through a Flask endpoint, 
2. Rule Activation Endpoint. Create a function to check which rules are activated based on the input values. Serve this data through a Flask endpoint. Front End, JavaScript and HTML. 1. Chart.js Integration. Fetch membership function data from the back end. Plot the membership functions using chart.js. 2. Interactive Rule Activation Table. Create an interactive element that updates based on the input values. Fetch rule activation data from the back end and update the display to show which rules are active. By implementing these enhancements, the web application will provide a comprehensive visualization of the fuzzy logic system. Users will be able to see how input values are mapped to fuzzy sets, understand which rules are activated, and identify any issues that could lead to errors in the fuzzy logic evaluation. This approach not only improves the transparency and usability of the application, but also facilitates debugging and optimization of the fuzzy logic system. Uh, we also have another um, issue, well, minor thing at the moment is that uh, because we have the generate signal button generating the signal and causing the analysis to be executed, do we really need the analyze signal button on the front page? Also, could you suggest ways to improve the EEG signal? So essentially, how can we make it uh, look more realistic? Uh, we potentially would like to add controllers for the the signal uh, generation parameters on the front page as well so we can see what the uh, difference does it make can we first uh, get a response without any code using continuous text whole paragraphs given that the generate signal button is currently responsible for both generating the eeg signal and triggering the analysis the analyze signal button may no longer be necessary on the front page Removing it can simplify the user interface, making the application more intuitive to use. Users would only need to press one button to generate and analyze the signal simultaneously, streamlining the workflow. To make the generated EEG signal appear more realistic, several improvements can be considered. First, the base sine wave used in the current implementation can be enhanced by incorporating multiple frequencies to better mimic the complex nature of real EEG signals. Real EEG signals are composed of various waveforms, including alpha, beta, delta, and theta waves, each with different frequencies and amplitudes. By combining these waveforms, the synthetic signal will have a more realistic appearance. Second, the noise component can be adjusted to better reflect the types of artifacts commonly found in EEG data. Instead of purely random noise, consider adding muscle artifacts, EMG eye movement artifacts, EOG, and other physiological interferences. These artifacts can be modeled using different waveforms and patterns that are superimposed on the base signal. Third, introducing variability in the signal generation parameters can make the EEG data look more realistic. This includes varying the amplitude and frequency of the base waveforms, adjusting the intensity and type of artifacts, and incorporating non-stationarity to reflect the dynamic nature of EEG signals over time. To allow users to interactively adjust the signal generation parameters and observe the effects, adding control elements to the front page is a practical approach. These controllers can include sliders or input fields for parameters such as the frequencies and amplitudes of the different waveforms, the level of noise, and the intensity of specific artifacts. By adjusting these parameters, users can generate different EEG signals and immediately see the impact of their changes on the signal and its analysis results. In summary, the front page can be improved by removing the Analyze Signal button, enhancing the realism of the generated EEG signals through the incorporation of multiple waveforms and realistic artifacts, and adding interactive controllers for adjusting signal generation parameters. These changes will not only simplify the user interface, but also provide a more flexible and realistic simulation environment for users to explore different EEG signal characteristics. Sure, let's make this more concise and enjoyable to read. First, let's talk about simplifying the interface. Right now, you have two buttons, one to generate the EEG signal 
and another to analyze it. But since the generate signal button already does both tasks, why keep the analyze signal button? By removing it, you'll have a cleaner, more straightforward interface where users press one button to see everything they need. Now, about making the EEG signals look more realistic. Real EEG signals are a mix of various waveforms like alpha, beta, delta, and theta waves. Each of these has different frequencies and amplitudes. So instead of using just a simple sine wave, why not mix in a few different ones? This will make the synthetic EEG look much more like the real thing. Also, consider tweaking the noise. Right now, you have random noise, but real EEG signals have specific types of artifacts like muscle movements, EMG, eye movements, EOG, and other physiological interferences. Adding these will make the signal even more lifelike. Finally, how about giving users some control? Add sliders or input fields on the front page so they can play around with the parameters. Let them adjust things like the frequencies and amplitudes of the waveforms or the level of noise and artifact intensity. This way, they can see how these changes affect the signal in real time. In short, ditch the extra button, spice up the EEG signals with more realistic waveforms and noise, and let users have some fun tweaking the settings. This will make your application not only more user-friendly, but also more engaging and educational. Yeah, I like the fun uh, language uh, with uh, the complete uh, sentences continuous full paragraphs that's great he didn't update history sure thing let's break it down in a fun and easy way first off let's simplify the interface right now you've got two buttons one to generate the eeg signal and another to analyze it but here's the thing the generate signal button already does both jobs so why keep the analyze signal button around let's give it the boot this way your interface will be cleaner and more user-friendly. Users will only need to press one button to see everything they need. Easy peasy. Next, let's make those EEG signals look more realistic. Real EEG signals are like a complex symphony of different waveforms, alpha, beta, delta, and theta waves, each with its own unique frequency and amplitude. So instead of using just a plain old sine wave, why not mix in a few different ones? By combining these waveforms, your synthetic EEG signals will look much more like the real deal. It's like going from a simple tune to a full-blown orchestra. Now, let's talk about noise. Right now, your noise is just random, but real EEG signals have specific types of artifacts, like muscle movements, EMG, eye movements, EOG, and other physiological interferences. Adding these types of noise will make your signals even more lifelike. It's like adding those little imperfections that make something truly authentic. Finally, let's give users some control over the signal generation. Add some sliders or input fields on the front page so they can play around with the parameters. Let them adjust the frequencies and amplitudes of the waveforms or tweak the level of noise and artifact intensity. This way, they can see how these changes affect the signal in real time. It's like giving them the conductor's baton to direct the symphony themselves. So in a nutshell, let's get rid of the extra button, jazz up the EEG signals with more realistic waveforms and noise, and let users have fun tweaking the settings. This will make your application not only more user-friendly, but also more engaging and educational. Everyone loves a good symphony, especially when they get to be the conductor. Method, post, headers, content type, application JSON. Sure, let's dive into the updates with some fun and detailed explanations. Backend enhancements, making the magic happen. First up, the backend. We've supercharged the EEG signal generation process. Instead of just a simple sine wave, our new function combines multiple waveforms like alpha, beta, delta, and theta waves, giving you a symphony of frequencies and amplitudes that mimic real EEG signals. We've also added some realistic noise and artifacts to spice things up simulating muscle movements and eye twitches. These artifacts make the synthetic EEG data look like the real deal. Plus, we've included parameters like noise level and artifact level, so you can tweak these elements on the fly. To make this all work, we set up endpoints in Flask. When you hit the Generate Signal button, the backend gets your parameters, generates the data, and sends it back. Then, another endpoint analyzes this data, checking out the amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk before running it through our fuzzy logic system. 
This system has a bunch of rules that determine the quality of the signal, and we've expanded these rules to cover more scenarios. So, no more errors about the system being too sparse. Front-end enhancements. User-friendly and interactive. Now, onto the front-end. We've streamlined the interface by ditching the Analyze Signal button. Who needs it when the Generate Signal button does both jobs? This means when you generate a signal, it's automatically analyzed and you get instant feedback. We've added some cool sliders for noise level and artifact level right on the front page. You can slide these around to see how different levels of noise and artifacts affect the EEG signal. This gives you a hands-on way to experiment with the signal parameters. To make everything visual and interactive, we integrated chart.js. This library helps us plot the EEG signals and it's showing you exactly what's happening. When you generate a signal, it gets plotted on a nice clean chart. We also display the results of the analysis, amplitude, frequency, and artifact risk, so you can see all the important details at a glance. Bringing it all together. When you load the page, everything kicks off automatically. The EEG signal is generated with your default parameters, and the analysis runs without you lifting a finger. If you want to change things up, just adjust the sliders and hit Generate Signal again to see how the new parameters affect the signal. The back end handles all the heavy lifting, while the front end keeps everything smooth and interactive. In summary, we've made the back end smarter and the front end more intuitive and fun. You get realistic EEG signals, instant analysis, and interactive controls to play with. It's a seamless experience that lets you explore the fascinating world of EEG signals right from your browser. Okay, so it's generally working with no errors, which is great. Um, however, the controls do not make much sense. Let's see example images. Can you explain what's going on in uh, text alone? Continuous sentences, whole paragraphs, make it detailed, but fun. It's fantastic to hear that the application is running without errors. But I see there's a bit of a hiccup with the signal controls, and the generated signals aren't quite behaving as expected. Let's dive into what's happening. <laughs> signal generation and controls. Right now, the noise level and artifact level sliders are supposed to let you tweak how much noise and artifact intensity are added to your EEG signal. Ideally, moving these sliders should smoothly change the appearance of the signal, with higher values resulting in more pronounced noise and artifacts. But from the images you've shared, it looks like the generated signals are a bit chaotic and don't correlate well with the adjustments being made. What's going wrong? One, parameter sensitivity. The parameters might be too sensitive or not properly scaled. For example, a small change in the noise level or artifact level might be resulting in a disproportionately large change in the signal, making it look messy and unrealistic. Two, signal composition. The combination of multiple waveforms, alpha, delta, theta, along with noise and artifacts might not be balanced correctly. This imbalance can cause the signal to look cluttered or not representative of typical EEG data. 3. Noise and Artifact Characteristics The way noise and artifacts are generated might be too uniform or too extreme. Realistic EEG noise and artifacts should vary and blend more naturally with the signal. How to improve it? 1. Adjust parameter scaling. We need to refine how the noise level and artifact level sliders influence the signal. This might involve using a nonlinear scaling function or limiting the range of these parameters to ensure more realistic adjustments. Or two, balance waveforms. Ensure that the different waveforms, alpha, beta, delta, theta, are balanced and contribute to the overall signal in a realistic way. This might mean tweaking their frequencies and amplitudes so they complement each other rather than creating interference patterns that look unnatural. Three, enhance noise and artifacts. Make the noise and artifacts more varied and realistic. Instead of adding a constant level of noise, use a function that simulates physiological variations. For artifacts, consider different types like eye blinks or muscle movements and vary their intensity and occurrence over time. Example adjustments. Imagine if adjusting the noise level slider added more subtle background noise rather than spikes. It would look more like gentle static rather than sharp peaks. Similarly, 
Adjusting the artifact level, AppSlider could introduce occasional but realistic artifacts that resemble real EEG disturbances, like periodic muscle twitches or eye blinks, rather than constant or uniform noise. The fun part? Think of your EEG signal like a beautiful piece of music. The different waveforms, alpha, beta, delta, theta, are like different instruments in an orchestra. They need to harmonize together to create a pleasant melody, a realistic EEG signal. The noise is like the ambient sound of the concert hall. It should be there, but not overpowering. The artifacts are like the occasional cough or shuffle in the audience. They should happen sporadically and naturally. Right now, it's like all the musicians are playing at random volumes and tempos, making the music sound chaotic. By fine-tuning these elements, you'll turn that chaotic noise into a symphony of realistic EEG signals that respond naturally to your controls. This will make your application not only more accurate, but also more engaging and insightful for users exploring the fascinating world of EEG data. Sure, let's talk about how incorporating different waveforms like alpha, beta, delta, and theta as inputs can make your EEG signal generation more realistic and engaging. The magic of EEG waveforms. EEG signals are fascinating because they are composed of various waveforms, each representing different brain activities. These waveforms are like the different instruments in a symphony, each playing a unique role. By using alpha, beta, delta, and theta waves, you can create a rich and realistic EEG signal that captures the complexity of brain activity. Alpha waves, the calm background. Alpha waves are like the calm, soothing background music. They typically range from eight to 12 hertz and are associated with relaxed, wakeful states, such as when you're daydreaming or meditating. Adding alpha waves to your EEG signal can create a steady rhythm that forms the foundation of your brain's activity. Beta waves. The active beats beta waves are the active, upbeat melodies. They range from 12 to 30 hertz and are linked to active thinking, problem solving, and focus. When you're engaged in a task or deep in concentration, beta waves dominate. Incorporating beta waves will add a layer of energy and alertness to your signal, reflecting moments of cognitive engagement. Delta waves, the deep bass. Delta waves are the deep, slow bass notes. They range from 0.5 to 4 hertz and are most prominent during deep sleep and restorative processes. These waves are crucial for physical and mental rejuvenation. Adding delta waves to your signal will mimic those moments when the brain is in a deep, restful state, providing a slow and rhythmic undertone. Theta waves, the dreamy tunes. Theta waves are the dreamy, wandering tunes. They range from 4 to 8 hertz and are associated with light sleep, relaxation, and creativity. They often appear when you're drifting off to sleep or in a deeply relaxed state. Theta waves will bring a sense of creativity and tranquility to your EEG signal, adding another layer of complexity. Bringing it all together. By combining these waveforms, you create an EEG signal that's like a well-composed symphony. Each waveform plays its part, blending together to reflect the dynamic nature of brain activity. For instance, during a session of focused work, you might see a dominance of beta waves with underlying alpha waves providing a steady rhythm. During relaxation, alpha and theta waves might dominate, creating a calming and serene pattern. Fun with controls. Imagine adding sliders for each waveform on your front page. Users could adjust the intensity of alpha, beta, delta, and theta waves and see how these changes affect the overall EEG signal. This would be like having a mixing board for your brain's symphony, allowing you to create different moods in the signal. For example, sliding up the beta waves could simulate an intense brainstorming session, while increasing delta waves could mimic deep sleep. By giving users control over these waveforms, you make the experience interactive and educational letting them explore how different brain states might look in an EEG signal. Enhancing realism. To further enhance realism, ensure that these waveforms are blended naturally. Real brain activity is fluid and continuous, with different waveforms waxing and waning as the brain shifts states. Avoid abrupt changes, and instead use smooth transitions to reflect the organic nature of brain activity. The final symphony. In summary, by incorporating alpha, beta, delta, and theta waves into your EEG signal generation, you create a rich and realistic representation of brain activity. These waveforms, like instruments in a symphony, come together to produce a complex and engaging signal. 
With interactive controls, users can adjust each waveform, creating a personalized and educational experience. This approach not only makes your application more accurate, but also more fun and insightful for anyone exploring the world of EEG data. Yes, yeah, so we have something working. Uh, it's at the default settings. You can't really see amplitude, amplitude. Right, so that's the artifact. This is the noise. Yeah, we need the artifact level to be. Yeah, we need to adjust the levels. Have alpha. Let's check if the EEG makes any sense. Okay, so we have alpha, beta, delta, theta. And we can add noise on top of it. And the EMG artifact. And it does make sense. Alpha free. So, yeah, we need the values. Okay, let's ask the robot, and then we'll become uh, clearer as well, hopefully. Okay, so first of all, it's working with no errors. So, this is great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm thrilled to hear that everything is working smoothly without any errors. It's fantastic to see the project come together successfully. If you have any more questions, need further adjustments, or want to add more features, feel free to ask. Happy exploring with your enhanced EEG signal analysis application. Uh, this is what it looks like when we are loading the page. So everything seemed to work fine. I can move all the controllers. They seem to work okay. So that's great. They generate the signal quality, amplitude, frequency, artifact risk on the fly. So that's awesome. Just submit it as I see what we get. The frequency. If you take alpha frequency, the frequency seem to work. I need probably a reminder of which one is which. That's fantastic to hear. It looks like everything is functioning perfectly and the interactive controls are working as intended. Your application now offers a comprehensive and engaging way to generate and analyze EEG signals with realistic waveforms and noise. What's next? Here are a few ideas to further enhance your application. One, visual enhancements. Color coding. Use different colors for each type of wave, alpha, beta, delta, theta, to visually distinguish their contributions in the combined EEG signal. Real-time updates. Show real-time updates of the signal as users adjust the sliders to provide immediate visual feedback. Two, additional features. Save and load settings. Allow users to save their current settings, frequencies, amplitudes, noise level, artifact level, and load them later. Preset configurations. Offer preset configurations for common brain states like relaxed, high alpha, low beta, or focused, high beta, moderate alpha. Three. Educational tooltips, tooltips and info boxes. Add tooltips or info boxes next to each slider explaining what the waveform represents and how it affects the EEG signal. Four, data export. Export data. Allow users to export the generated EEG data and analysis results in a CSV or JSON format for further analysis or educational purposes. Five, user experience, responsive design. Ensure the application is fully responsive and works well on various devices, including tablets and smartphones. Smooth transitions. Add smooth transitions and animations for slider adjustments to enhance the user experience. Celebrating success. You've created a powerful and interactive tool that not only generates realistic EEG signals, but also provides a hands-on way to explore how different brainwave components contribute to overall brain activity. This application can be a great educational resource for students, researchers, and enthusiasts interested in EEG analysis. And that sounds great. Let's go uh, one by one about uh, what could be done next. A color coding sounds great, but I'm not sure how exactly are you going to do it. Can you explain first? How are you suggesting to do the color coding? Now, real-time updates uh, seem to be already happening. So that seems to be working okay already. So no changes needed there. 
a preset configurations sound good but uh, I suspect this might just complicate uh, things too much uh, let me know what you think a uh, tool tips and info boxes sound very good so I could really use those that they will really help also on the same topic uh, can we actually display the current value next uh, to the sliders maybe unless you think it will be over populating the on the panel so i quickly also checked if how does it look on mobile and it seemed to be good already that uh, that sounds uh, promising and uh, keep it technical but yet fun that would be greatly appreciated absolutely let's dive into each of these enhancements and see how we can make your eeg signal analysis tool even better step by step color coding color coding the different waveforms can make it visually clearer which component contributes to the overall eeg signal here's how we can implement this one identify components we'll separate the signal into its constituent waveforms alpha beta delta and theta two Assign colors. Assign a distinct color to each waveform. For instance, alpha could be blue, beta could be red, delta could be green, and theta could be purple. Three, plot components separately. Modify the plotting function to plot each waveform separately in its assigned color before combining them into the final EEG signal. Four, combine and display. Overlay the colored waveforms on the same chart to show their combined effect. This way, users can see at a glance which frequencies are dominating the signal. It adds an extra layer of insight and makes the visualization much more engaging. Real-time updates. It's great to hear that real-time updates are working well. Since this feature is already in place and functioning correctly, no further changes are needed here. Real-time feedback is a fantastic feature that enhances interactivity and user engagement. Preset configurations. While preset configurations like relaxed or focused sound appealing, they might add unnecessary complexity to your current setup. Instead, focusing on user-driven customization with sliders allows for more exploration and learning. Presets could be revisited in the future if user feedback suggests a demand for them. Educational tooltips and info boxes. Tooltips and info boxes are a great addition to help users understand what each slider controls. Here's how we can implement them. One. Tooltips. Use small pop-up boxes that appear when users hover over or click on the sliders. These tooltips will explain what each waveform represents and how it affects the EEG signal. 2. Info boxes. Place static info boxes near each slider with brief descriptions. For example, next to the alpha frequency slider, you could have an info box that says, Alpha waves, 8 to 12 hertz, are associated with relaxation and calmness. 3. Current values. Display the current value next to each slider. This can be done using a small text box or label that updates as the slider is moved. This way, users can see the exact values they're setting, making the interface more informative without becoming cluttered. Mobile responsiveness. It's excellent news that your application already looks good on mobile devices. Ensuring a responsive design is crucial for accessibility and user experience across different devices. Since this is already functioning well, no changes are needed here. Putting it all together. Here's a detailed step-by-step -step plan for these enhancements. One color coding implementation. Update the signal generation function to separate and color code each waveform. Modify the plotting function to display these waveforms in their respective colors. Two, add educational tooltips and info boxes. Integrate tooltip libraries like tippy.js for hover or click-based tooltips. Add static info boxes next to each slider with brief descriptions of each waveform. Display the current value next to each slider, updating dynamically as the slider is moved. By implementing these enhancements, you'll make your EEG signal analysis tool even more interactive, educational, and user-friendly. It will allow users to visualize the contributions of different waveforms clearly and understand the effects of their adjustments through informative tooltips and value displays. 
This balanced approach ensures the interface remains clean and engaging without overwhelming the user. Let's get started with these updates and make your tool the best it can be. If you're ready, I can provide specific code examples for these enhancements. That sounds good. So we, we might try the color coding and see how we go. We don't want the uh, like too many too many things on the screen or too many colors because I think currently it's suggesting more um, a chart essentially displayed so a chart for each uh, EEG component in addition to the combined EEG now so it's updating real time so that's working okay we're not changing anything there uh, tool tips and info boxes yeah if that works we would like to add that definitely yes so as much information as possible but uh, keeping the interface uh, nice and clean we have updated code to add color coding for each eg component and uh, integrate tool tips for each slider so supposedly when i hover over it will show me some uh, useful information that would be nice yeah we like the interface informative and clean yeah we don't want to overwhelm the user with too many elements i think this probably already bothering too many elements and um, so we have updated javascript currently have already 100 lines of code and we just added another video so try it out we can always well not always but we should be able to revert back if uh, something goes astray uh, currently we have 60 lines of html okay it uh, it has a uh, what's called template uh, not template what's placeholder placeholder we don't like placeholders have to integrate okay let's do the header do the body well actually yeah we're adding spans to the body yeah we might need to uh, just generate the whole thing hey can you actually generate the the whole html code with all the necessary bit so hopefully the JavaScript is complete. We're regenerating the HTML. Once the Python code is um, po -po -po. what the complete stuff is it? It might be having trouble integrating. JavaScript now has the tool tips. Yeah, I can't see them actually, but the assume that they're because they're actually working. Uh, fine now in python code uh, we can try it out we have generate data yeah it's a post so what did we change yeah we're returning way more data it might not be ideal hey uh, let's comment that out for a sec that instead and now we also have different generate synthetic data eeg function yeah we only had eeg data before now we have the combined eeg data in each waveform separately as well uh yeah i had a feeling this will be messy this will be messy let's reduce the amplitudes for a sec to make sure working okay could have less uh, data points um yeah um when we have the 1000 we have a time can we just have one second kind of nice i i understand what the, we are trying to do but it just looks uh so so and those are 
number of symbols uh, not the time okay let's try two seconds there yeah the eg signal should be um, like overlay um, be the primary thing and everything else it should be in the background kind of thing yeah and this is actually kind of taking different direction we might uh, split this into two separate tools actually uh, one that shows the eeg generation the other one should should just do the fuzzy logic business because it's a whole separate story so we currently have an eeg generator but it's old and it needs more love doesn't actually change yeah we could update this one this one is up and running uh, you can use it already we'll be leaving it as is uh, and we'll be having a, another a more advanced uh, option or you know one that has different uh, features one doesn't have selection for noise which is unfortunate because like the noise is there so it could have been added fairly easily the frequency could really be fixed yeah we could have the amplitudes on the left frequencies on the right yeah the original idea <laughs> uh, so that was an emg artifact thing Yeah, probably the amplitude the amplitude should be normalized yeah i should be able to see that the emg so there is a emg in the beginning should be able to see it there would be another one if the signal was long enough the other question is this uh, application might be as it is at the moment might be overloading the server there might be too much uh, happening there okay um, first we have that error in the browser some uh, reference error and then undefined plugin a uh, will have to fix that it's actually only happening on page load but uh, then everything is still uh, working fine now the other thing is as you can tell from the image there is too much going on in the chart we do not like that it will be generating for a while uh, we might continue this tomorrow yeah take a look at uh, bionicchaos.com let me know what you think i'll be reviewing your feedback and addressing any issues during the next live stream and thank you for your input we really appreciate your time I'll see you next time. Bye.